Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, and today I have the pleasure of sharing with you one of the brightest minds in fertility medicine in the entire United States, Dr. Robert Kiltz. He has been helping women to get pregnant, helping couples to get pregnant when it seemed otherwise impossible. And today we're going to talk about some basic things that anyone who's trying to get pregnant can do and not do to increase their chances, increase the odds to actually not only get pregnant, but carry a, a pregnancy to term and have a beautiful bouncing baby boy or girl. So if you know anyone in your, your friends or family circle who is trying to get pregnant, is having trouble, trouble getting pregnant, please share this video with them. This could literally make all the difference for them. Uh, tell me in the comments where you're watching from, what city, what state, what country. I love seeing where everyone's at. Uh, we're going to have kind of a long form conversation and uh, kick this subject around and try to help you understand that there's a there's a baseline of things that have to be present, both in the, the human lifestyle and in the human diet in order for a woman to conceive. And so we're going to be talking about that. Let me go ahead and bring my guest in. Dr. Kiltz. Hello, Ken. How are you doing? And thank you. I am doing great. It's a pleasure to talk to you again. I think we did this once before on Facebook. We've got people from Minnesota and Newfoundland. That's in Tennessee. We say Newfoundland, but I don't think that's how they pronounce it. San Francisco, Wisconsin, Texas. Guys, welcome. Tell me where you're watching from. Dr. Kiltz, you've been, uh, you've been helping people conceive for quite a few years. I want you to tell everyone watching and listening just uh, who you are, what you do, and why we should care what you think. Well, uh, I certainly care what you think and have learned a tremendous uh, amount from you, Ken, and thank you very much. I've been doing uh, reproductive uh, medicine for about 30 years now and, uh, you know, gone the gambit from uh, traditional Western medicine. As a fertility specialist, um, I own, run, and direct CNY fertility centers uh, between Colorado and uh, Atlanta and up to uh, upstate New York. And I've been focusing on uh, traditional standard Western medicine, but over the last 10, 15 years, we've really worked to integrate a lot of Eastern medicine and how uh, stress, anxiety, fear, um, our dietary uh, uh, lifestyle and our habits uh, can adversely affect uh, fertility. And it seems to be on the rise for so many uh, young uh, individuals and couples. And uh, so I've um, really working diligently uh, day and night to bring some ideas that I'm learning from so many like you uh, on helping others conceive either naturally or through some assisted reproductive medicine, including in vitro fertilization. Yes. And you're a, you're an OBGYN by training, you're board certified. And then I think you have a fellowship in uh, the endocrinology of fertility medicine, if that, if I'm correct about that. I started actually in internal medicine and then switched to OBGYN. And then uh, after becoming board certified and, and practicing that a little bit, I actually went off and did a fellowship in reproductive endocrinology and infertility. Yeah. And there was a time in this country, uh, say, 100 years ago, where if we'd had the technology for MDs to specialize in reproductive medicine, there would have been about five of you guys in the country. Uh, because there was there was just no need for this kind of specialty. But I, I was reading a couple of articles in uh, journal in journals and popular media in preparation for this. And uh, infertility pro problems conceiving is becoming quite the epidemic issue in the United States and other modern countries, isn't it? Well, as we're seeing so many other uh, diseases on the rise, infertility and pregnancy losses and and failed implantation are all. Uh, similarly, uh, inflammatory and metabolic disorders. So we're seeing it on the rise. Besides the fact that so many young people are postponing childbearing until they're ready into their 30s and, and 40s even. But we're seeing more and more young women uh, in their early 20s and before, as I've heard you talk about polycystic ovarian syndrome, anovulation, and many other uh, diseases which are all related to metabolic disorders and, inf and in inflammation. Yeah, I think I think the two um, 
uh, paradigms of hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation. I think those probably account for most cases that are that are not from an anatomical uh, cause. Uh, Laura just said she's from Ontario. She said that uh, five years of infertility went keto seven months later and she's knocked up. Congratulations, Laura. Uh, and I actually, when I was very early talking about keto with my patients, I was just using it as a temporary weight loss hack. I didn't know everything that I know now. And uh, I had a couple of women. One was 48 and one was 51 years of age. Both come not, they came separately to the clinic at different days and they were furious with me. And they said, how come you did not tell me this keto would get me knocked up? And I said, well, now, wait a minute. I don't think keto got you knocked up, but it probably did move all of your hormones and all of your, your lab numbers to the sweet spot where you could get knocked up. And both of these women were, were pre-menopausal, I'm just the perimenopausal, right? They were already starting to notice a, a, an irregularity to the period. They were already starting, starting to notice diminished periods. And uh, both of them went back to having full periods and both of them got knocked up and they were not happy with me for a while. It turns out it was fine once they got over the shock. They were very, very happy about this surprise addition to the family. And But it was about that time when I started thinking, you know, maybe this is more than just a temporary weight loss hack. Maybe this does more to the human body than I uh, assumed initially. So let's, I guess, jump into this. Let's talk about diet first. I think that's probably the foundation of all human health. And, and I think that being fertile and being able to reproduce, that's kind of the ultimate uh, symbol that you are a healthy specimen. So let's well, when people, well, people say to me, well, I'm healthy and I'm infertile. And, and so we go down the list of, do you have any medical conditions? And the answer is, well, no, I don't. Uh, so they're healthy, but they're not conceiving. And I say that reproduction and ovulation and sperm function are all basically the, the, the bottom foundation of the signal of health and wellness. If you're not reproducing naturally, there is something wrong. Um, and some 15 years ago, I was delving into the mindfulness and the stress and, and brought in yoga and meditation and things. And then uh, some of these patients were getting pregnant that I couldn't get pregnant. And gee, I was thinking all the meditation and all the de-stressing, but they were doing this thing called paleo. And, and then I started learning about paleo and then keto. And then I started learning about carnivore and this thing called inflammation and how it's all linked. And, and uh, you know, no one wants to talk about uh, politics, religion, and diet. And, you know, that's the one thing that uh, they don't want to hear about. And uh, so I became a crazy man to talk about it when no one wants to talk about it. And um, it's something that I never require anyone to do a diet, nor do I ever tell anyone they need to lose weight. Uh, we are simply here to give them advice and information to inspire them to really uh, find some different answers and dis different solutions for sure. Yeah, and I think you're right on the nose. I, I think it's pretty well known in veterinary medicine and in human medicine that any stressed animal is, is less likely to reproduce. And uh, we see this in the zoos where they're in completely unnatural environments being fed an unnatural diet. And it's literally front page news if the panda or the elephant or the, the jaguar or whatever gets pregnant in the zoo, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a front page event because they're under such stress, it's almost impossible for them to get pregnant. And I think that that, that rule holds true for humans as well. Yeah, the more stress you're under, both the, 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 the sperm donor and the egg donor, the more stress they're under, uh, that, that's a big deal. Well, so I, I just I, I, I wrote this book called The Fertile Secret after reading The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. And I really plugged into the power of the mind and, and how stress. And, and then and then after that, uh, I came to write The Fertile Feast after the keto lifestyle, which is basically, uh, wait a minute. You know, the, the, so the belief systems are paramount and whether what we're going to do and what we're going to eat and how we're going to live. So, you know, your words are really tapping into people's better understanding in the mind so they can change their habits of what they put in their mouths. 
uh, and the other things they, they do that simply will, voila, it just happens. And we have as many people, I mean, obviously more people, because I only delve in the fertility realm, that are like, I'm pregnant, and uh, we delivered a baby, and it was all because of mostly the ketogenic uh, lifestyle, as we talk about, uh, but we talk uh, infinitely about carnivore, which is the harder concept for, for so many people to, to delve into. Yes, absolutely. So let's pretend we have an imaginary patient who's made a, an appointment with you at your clinic and, and she comes in and after the formality, she says, OK, doc, I've heard that you're a big proponent of, of diet. So I've just been eating the standard American crap, processed jelly donuts, Doritos, Pepsi, you know, what should I eat and well, what should I avoid so to increase my chances of getting pregnant? Well, well, quite often, so I, my, my questions are related to uh, what do you eat and how often do you eat? And it usually starts with I eat healthy and um, or I eat anything. And, and quite often, I mean, we don't remember what we eat. The only reason I remember what I eat is because I eat the same thing every day. Like every other standard animal in the world, you eat the same thing every day, which I always say boring is the best way to the baby. But um, I asked the questions about, you know, I asked how long have they been trying? Uh, do they have any pregnancies, any miscarriages? I asked about the, the cyclicity of the woman's menstrual cycle because right away that tells me whether or not there may be an inflammatory metabolic hormonal dysfunction. Um, and ask, after I kind of go down the list, any medical issues, uh, any surgeries and allergies, I asked the question about what they eat. And, um, and then once I get down to the side about, okay, what can you do to get there? I usually start with, well, what can we do to reduce inflammation and stress to the body? And um, a, a keto paleo diet profile or lifestyle is really a high fat, uh, low carb, actually low carb, low protein diet. And that's the thing that most people don't understand um, you know, most keto diets are high protein and they forget about the, the, the I'm sorry, high protein, low carb, and they forget about the fat as the critical component. But, you know, I, I, I guide and direct them to the, it's the fact that boring is better. And for me, I call it the baby's diet, bacon, eggs, butter, beef, ice cream, and salt. Now, every guy loves that one uh, and is willing to jump into it. But on the gal side, it's harder. And and I and I I usually rather than the donuts and the Doritos and the pizzas, they're usually eating a healthy diet of fruit, fibers, vegetables, seeds and nuts and lean meat, but no red meat. And so I, I give them the conversation of how important it is that fat is actually the only fuel for the human body. Fat is the anti-inflammatory uh, molecule for the human body. And by eating the fat and, uh, and recognizing that things like fasting, but I call it intermittent feasting. So even if you're eating the same thing you're eating today, and if you only eat one time a day, you'll significantly reduce the inflammation and the glucose loads to your body. And the other thing I really suggest is cook the carbs well to simplify them and to kill the bacteria, the yeast, and the viruses, and uh, disarm the phytochemicals and the plant lectins, oxalates, and others as one sort of method to do that. Um, I, talk, I talk a lot about Maria Emmerich, and, and uh, Maria uh, uh, and Craig have a lot of really great advice that, I mean, I cook, uh, and I just had my ribeye steak before I came down to, to have this conversation, but it's a home run to me. Absolutely. And uh, Alan asked a question. He said, you know, we always hear about women's fertility, but what about men? Uh, and I would opine that the, the baby's diet that you just talked about, and I want you to repeat what, what exactly is in that again in a second. But I mean, the, the sperm count of the average man in modern society is about 40 percent or less of what it used to be. The average testosterone level of a man in modern society compared to 100 years ago is about 80 to 90 percent less 
those two things are vital. And so the, the diet that I talk about and the diet that you talk about, because, it you know, it takes two, at least takes a sperm, may not take a man, but at least takes a sperm to tango and, and create a viable pregnancy. And if a man is eating a junk, car, high carb diet without the healthy fats, and without the, the good proteins, they are not, they're going to have a low testosterone count, which first of all, they're not going to be in the mood to have sex. Then when they do have sex, their sperm count is going to be 60, 70, 80% lower than it should be. How much of a problem is, is the, the, the men uh, versus the women? Not that we're blaming anybody, but that we're just saying that that's where the problem's at. And then I want, after that, I want you to tell us again, because everybody wants to know what were those things you said in the baby's diet? So number one, it's always the sperm and it's always the egg. It's always the embryo and it's always the implantation site. Um, I had a couple today, it's his sperm, but uh, and she said it's not me, but in fact she had fibroids. A bad sperm, either count motility, morphology, uh, and even DNA fragmentation are all markers of damaged sperm but also the fact that normal sperm, normal erections, normal sex, normal testosterone, along with normal uterus, tubes, ovaries, and menstruation, and failure to conceive always means it's the sperm, it's the egg, it's the embryo, it's the uterus. We can never negate any side of that. When we talk about these dietary and lifestyle changes, uh, it's for everyone. It isn't for the guy, the gal, the separate. It's always for both, even though he's got the best sperm in the world or she's got the best eggs and uterus, it's always both. So yep. I have just a few things I tell everyone. Number one, one meal, one snack. It should be a bacon, eggs, butter, beef, ice cream, and salt is my, my foundation. Now, um, ice cream is made, by the way, with full cream, an egg, a little bit of vanilla, and some white sugar. So it, I've got videos, I've got it all out there. It's in my book on, on, on Amazon. I talk about it all day long, uh, but keep it narrow. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, still one meal, one snack, add the fat. Uh, hemp seed, coconut, olive oil for vegans, vegetarians, cream, butter, eggs, best. Um, so, you know, we're really, we got to really help people also change their lifestyle. Everyone's on a treadmill. Let me eat the food to gain the weight and then get on a treadmill to burn the energy. There is not one animal or organism in the universe that would do that ever. I tell people to get off the treadmill, stop lifting the weights and cool it down and slow it down. Heat, friction, repetitive motion will damage the sperm, the eggs, the embryos, and the uterus. We even talk about get out of the hot tub, cool the body down. A, a cool soak is going to be better. And even the snowballs, I have them around here somewhere, which is an ice pack for the guys to cool the testicles down. It's critical. Uh, and because it's simply heat, friction, glucose is the leading cause of glycosylation and inflammation. It starts in the mouth, the esophagus, the GI tract, and everywhere. It damages the sperm, the egg, the embryo. I've been talking a lot about glycosylation versus glycation, but basically sugar is lettuce, is kale, is, is fruit, fiber, vegetables. It's everything. And one other point is that complex carbs like to go to the colon and feed the bacteria and yeast and the viruses that ferment, that create heat, alcohol, aldehydes, and methane. They sit right next to the ovaries and uterus and completely damage all of that. And they damage the testicles and the prostate. So the story, you're telling the simplest story that you've seen so many diseases just go away, no longer be managed, but be done. And you're putting yourself out of a job, my friend, which is really what our job really is if we're doing what we're really meant to do as physicians and healthcare providers. Yeah, I totally agree. I think there should be physicians for acute trauma and for infections and for, you know, the diseases of very, very advanced age. 
but all of this muck in the middle, all these internal medicine docs and family docs and, and endocrinologists. And I mean, they really, if you and I are ultimately successful, they're all going to be looking for a job because there, there will be no chronic diseases to manage except the very rare genetic condition or the very rare, you know, other condition that somebody's just unlucky enough to have. Once you and I reverse all of the self-inflicted chronic diseases, there are going to be doctors putting ads in the yellow pages looking for something to do. And, and that that's absolutely my goal. Not that I have anything against doctors. I'm one myself and so are you, but we should not build this false economy on treating chronic conditions that are chronic and progressive if in fact they're really not that. And so I, 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 I love the fact that you are first and foremost attacking or, or building the foundation. Let's fix your nutrition. Let's fix your lifestyle. Let's fix your stress level. And then once we've got all that stuff fixed, then if you need a more advanced procedure, if you need IUI or IVF, I'm here to help you. I can do that. But probably, chances are, you don't need any of that. You just need to stop eating crap and start eating a proper human diet and, and, and you know, get out of the hot tub, stop running on the treadmill an hour a day and have a lot of good, happy, fun sex. We need to spend, I always say, uh, feed me, um, uh, put me to bed, but visit with me first and then I'll go to sleep. And yep. so really, I mean, ultimately our foundation is sex and relationships and connections. I mean, you know, with your young, young child and how beautiful uh, children are. And really, again, it's the foundation and we're feeding, we or have been feeding the, the diet that actually causes the disease that requires the drugs that ultimately you're never going to solve as long as you keep on going down that road. Absolutely agree. Guys, if you're just joining us, this is Dr. Robert Kiltz. He's a fertility specialist, uh, one of the preeminent ones on the East Coast. And we're talking about ways that you can increase fertility. And uh, I know that this chat today is not for everyone. I got a lot of, uh, you know, bros and a lot of guys, single guys who follow my channel. And but this may, this talk may not be for you, but it is definitely for your sister or your your daughter or your granddaughter. Uh, so it, also following this advice is going to help you be healthier, too. But it probably won't help you get knocked up. Uh, guys, you're welcome. If you if you know someone who's trying to conceive and is having trouble, you can share this. We're live on Facebook and YouTube right now. And this video will be here even after the live is over. So you're welcome to click the share button and share this with anybody, or you can just uh, type their name in and tag them in the comments and they'll get a notification. Where, where do you want to go next with this conversation, Dr. Kilt? Well, well, I think that um, what we're really working to do is capture one women pregnant because keto is the most sustainable thing. And when you're pregnant, being keto, in my opinion, is critical. You don't need to measure ketones. You just need to stay on the thing that got you pregnant. My belief is the plants are actually the predators. They create the molecules that actually are, are controlling us. And when you really look at most of the hallucinogenic and all the fun drugs that we all use, including food, it's all plant-based. And uh, they actually make uh, the androgens, the progestins, and the estrogens that actually cause our birth control. And so if we can get the young guys and the young gals even younger to begin to look at this, because children, um, and even recognizing that breast milk is for babies and human breast milk is the best way, and the more then you can transition your, your, your infants when they're ready to eat into a keto lifestyle, you will reduce the number of diseases and help uh, reduce the cancers that are way too common at younger and younger ages for sure. So, you know, this is a formula that is sustainable because we're lions, we are not pigs and cows. We are actually hunters and gatherers uh, when we really get back to who and what we are, no disrespect to anyone's choice of what they like to eat, but the cause of our diseases is a plant-based diet. And that's as simple as that. Yep. I love it. And so Michelle said, uh, 
you lost me when you said plants are, are bad. So Michelle is kind of confused about what you're talking about as far as the lectins and the phytates and the phytoestrogens. Uh, and you want to dive into that a little bit for Michelle and everyone else? Well, I suffered as a child from bowel problems and migraines. And, and as I grew older, I had psoriasis, eczema, arthritis. I had kidney stones and my migraines continued. Um, I went paleo for a while and was better, but uh, then I went keto. And when I went carnivore, uh, everything went away, gone. Yeah. And so That's then right. I wanted to, to really delve into it. If you read Kevin Stock, he's a dentist. He has a really great blog and he talks about the phyto, phytochemicals um, and the uh, phyto and, and antigens. When you recognize, I mean, every toxic chemical that we know comes from a plant. And so it was like, well, wait a minute, but kale and Brussels sprouts and broccoli are so good for us. Well, if you actually go to the World Health Organization and you just Google this stuff, even on Wikipedia, it is so clear that for some of us who think it's all good for us, but they have a little, they have fibroids or endometriosis or a little here and there, or they have ADHD, I have dyslexia and I have ADHD, uh, but I use it in my advantage today. But I will tell you that the, the plants contain all the toxic chemicals. I mean, plants can't run away. So they figured, okay, what are we gonna do here? They got 400 million years of evolution. Plus they have better, they have more DNA than you and I. And yeah. so, they, well, why? Because they're smart. There's no organism in the universe that's dumb because the universe is the smartest entity you'll ever know. And so as I dig into this stuff, it's like, okay, I'm keto, but it's not working for me. Then I'm like, okay, well, what are you eating exactly? So then I can pinpoint maybe the thing that maybe the hook in it. Even dry aged meat, by the way, contains a lot of histamines. Histamines cause inflammation, G. Again, it's all related. And as you begin to look more and more in depth, and uh, my my book on Amazon, uh, Dr. Kiltz's Keto Lifestyle, and also I'm going to plug it a little bit as the Fertile Feast. I don't know if you can see it there, uh, but it it really is bringing these concepts to play. But listen, don't believe me. Do your own research. You're not going to find it though in the scientific journals because. They're harder and harder to get published, but uh, Finney uh, and and Wolek and uh, 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 Saladino uh, and so many others, it's there. Just start digging into it, and that's why I do my steak. That's pretty much it. I do steak fragua with butter and salt. Pretty much boring, boring, boring. But yet, oh, so, so exciting. Of course, it is. I mean, we're the Ferraris, we're the temples. We've been trained to treat ourselves like a Yugo and an amusement park. And we all need to take responsibility for our own health and wellness. I say, listen, I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to medical school. You today, uh, everyone in this globe has access to more medical information than you ever imagined we had access to. And um, find your own thing that's going to heal you and get your own advice. Stop Start yep. being your own advocate. Yeah, I totally agree. And Michelle, if you want more information, Dr. Stephen Gundry's got a great book out called The Plant Paradox. Dr. Paul Saladino's got a great book out, uh, The Carnivore Code, I think. And it's a, it's a it, it really goes into detail. Plants can't run away from us. They don't have claws or teeth. They have to have defenses to protect themselves. And they use chemicals. Now, and some of those chemicals we take advantage of, like cannabis, like uh, like caffeine in 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 uh, coffee and tea, we we take advantage of some of these toxins, but others of them uh, don't do us any good. And so it's a great question, uh, uh, Dr. Kiltz, where this comes from. Early in the keto movement, a few years back, there were a couple of big keto gurus who who really were but believed in plants. They're, they're magic, and they would tell people to have you need to eat at least seven to ten cups of salad every single day. And so when people say, you know, I, I tried keto, it didn't work for me. 
and whether they're trying to get weight loss or reverse diabetes or, or get knocked up, invariably when I say, the, I ask the question, you just said, okay, I understand, but tell me exactly what you were eating on your keto. And invariably they were eating a, a plant-based ketogenic diet, which for some people that does work at least part of the journey. But for many people that it's too, too many phytates, too many lectins, too many phytoestrogens, and just too many carbohydrates total and they just don't see the results. Whereas if they go on a much more, either a ketovore diet, which is a very fatty meat, heavy ketogenic diet, or even a fatty meat carnivore diet, that's where they're gonna find their results. And I don't think everyone has to do that, but I think a great many of us, if we're having problems with infertility or low testosterone or being overweight or diabetes, fatty liver, uh, you know, cancer history in the family, those people need to be very aware the plants are not their friends. You can eat them occasionally for pleasure. You can use them for, for medicinal purposes like, you know, dogs do. But but as far as thinking that the majority of your diet should be plants, I think that's more propaganda than it is actual nutrition and medical advice. Yeah, there's just so much great stuff out there. Uh, Gary Tobbs has some really, really great stuff. Just read his books. Uh, and then you begin to delve in the books and you know, Atkins has some great stuff, uh, but you know, the most people are focusing on, I want to look good. Well, I don't ever tell anyone to lose weight. Um, if there's a famine and you're not fat, you're dead. Uh, fat babes thrive and survive and skinny dies in a famine. And many organisms and animals actually get fat to get fertile. And then they use the fat. Remember the fat is the fuel for the human body everywhere, always. Uh, my theory, and there's some great stuff on this about the glycobiome, glycosylation is Huge necessary. Deal. It's like amazing. But basically, if you cannot seed the, the, the proteins and the lipids with glucose, they cannot function properly. The right. problem is we've been giving a glycation diet, which basically is over sugar coating, which damages everything. And, and it really is, is so simple. I always say the five things that cause all disease, uh, glucose, the, the plant phytochemicals, the plant antigens, you can add in some other microbes also, but it's mostly plants. Then it's the fermentation of the, in the colon, which causes heat, gas, alcohol, and aldehydes uh, and methane. And then the final one, which is the hardest one, is exercise. Um, exercise, in my opinion, is deadly for us human beings. I mean, write a book, sing a song, build a home, uh, uh, do, I mean, I'm a, I do pottery and painting as bad as it is, but I still do it. Uh, but we've gotta be more creative. We're doing things in our lives that ultimately are, in my opinion, a little bit of a waste because no other organism will spend money on calories and then go burn it so they can get skinny for no reason. And the real, the real fitness of the majority of our evolution is if you didn't, you weren't fat in some way, you were not reproductively uh, uh, viable. Yeah, I totally agree. I think a certain percentage of body fat is an indicator of good health. And uh, obviously we don't want too much body fat, but uh, uh, especially a woman, I think that having a certain percentage body fat is vital. Now, earlier you mentioned uh, eating one meal a day or two meals a day, and I've gotten a lot of questions. Do you think that daily intermittent fasting is a tool that women should use when they're trying to conceive or should they just eat constantly? What, what, what do you say about that? Well, here's what I, I always say, okay, because we are actually built to eat probably once a day or less. Through our thousands of years of evolution, and I have no idea how long it really was. And remember, if you found anything way back when you ate it, because if you didn't, you were dead. But by going to one meal a day, and breakfast is deadly, because once you eat breakfast, you are not gonna stop eating throughout the day. Once you get in the habit, you go to one meal a day. Now, I've recently expanded it, I'll give you one meal, one snack. Now, again, 
because you want your glucose levels actually probably at 60 most of the day. So then at night, you're going to digest the food. By the time you're in the morning, your glucose levels are going to be low again. That's really the game changer, in my opinion. And I just want to speak that it takes one to two weeks of this amazing dietary change lifestyle. <clears throat> changes, no matter your weight, by the way, because obesity isn't the cause of disease. Obesity is the outcome of our healthy diet and lifestyle. Uh, I personally think we are fat shaming, <laughs> you know, judging people for their obesity when it's not their problem. The, the bucket or the bowels are filled with, I call them a digester or decomposing. It's basically making and extracting the sugar, the amino acids and the fatty acids. Fatty acids go to the lymphatics because they do not need processing in the liver. Glucose, sugars, and amino acids go to the liver where insulin must convert them to fatty acids or you die. My yeah. bet is, is that we do not use glucose for energy in our muscles or our brain. We use acetyl-CoA and we use ketones. They're always there. But I yes. agree, the one meal a day is, is like the most amazing thing you can ever do. I call it intermittent feasting, yeah. not intermittent. That. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's a good positive way to put it so that it, it makes it sound less bad. And I think it's a wonderful way to eat. I very often eat one meal a day, sometimes two meals a day. Um, so we covered fasting. Now, let's see, someone had a question. Oh, they were asking about uh, any meat will do, Dr. Kiltz, or do you or do you think that red meat or ruminant meat, what's the best meat uh, to get pregnant? Well, fatty meat is the thing, and nose to tail is the best way to get the real fat. You know, many lean meats, remember it's it's filet of fish, filet of chicken, uh, even the red and pork meats are usually lean, and they're not giving us the ratio of 50-50 in, in the grams, which ultimately are about 80% to 20% fat in your calories. So I personally think that we are here because we got out of the trees to eat the grass eaters. And those weren't the chickens or the ducks. Those were the big uh, uh, cattle. And believe me, in order to kill one of those things, we had to learn how to do it because they want to kill us. And uh, but I'd say fatty red meat is the very healthiest thing. Plus the liver, the organ meats, the bone marrow, the suet. Um, that's the crazy concept, which is everything we're afraid of because it's going to kill us. Here's the interesting part. Because of a high carbohydrate, low fat diet, we have damaged our digestive system. We've damaged the pancreas uh, and all its, its exocrine and endocrine uh, 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 outputs. We've damaged the gallbladder. So we've damaged. So then when we eat the fatty proteins, our body rejects them because we have a damaged GI system. So this is where go slow, um, do a little at a time. The, you know, if you need to do morning, afternoon and night, um, drink more water, but not too much, by the way, we're drowning our bodies. Um, I do coffee and I would say that your body will heal when you do these things slow and easy. And you'll feel better in two to four weeks. And I have so many people, that, and you probably know this, diabetes, hypertension, bowel problems, every disease that you and I know that are, that are my mother, my parents had it, it's, it's, it's in our genes. It's in all of our genes. We're genetically predisposed to get these diseases. And so I'm seeing so many people that have genetic disorders change the environment of inside the Ferrari and bingo, they get pregnant or those diseases that you're primarily cared for over the years are, are gone. Yeah. I, I see it happen all the time and it's always there. I mean, if, if to them, it feels miraculous, but you and I actually know the science behind it, but it still makes me very happy when I hear a success story. Now, what, let's talk about supplements. Are there, when you have a, that new lady come in, are there any standard vitamin and mineral levels that you check are there any standard vitamin, mineral, or other supplements that you recommend? Well, we uh, just, I apologize because I had to reach over. I mean, we, I talk a lot about CBD oil and low-dose naltrexone. 
A lot of people may not know about Lotus naltrexone, but LDN is something that Phil Boyle in Ireland has been using for years because it's an anti-inflammatory. And so is CBD oil with no THC. Uh, and so are omega-3 fatty acids. I mean, we have our molecular fertility line, but you know, any good quality supplement, we have a molecular fertility female and male supplements, but so much of it, it really is, if you do these diets right, you don't need any supplements. Um, a good ionized salt, but if you're getting the, the whole uh, animal, including the, the thyroid and thymus and all these things, you're gonna get everything you need. Uh, but we do have a molecular fertility line. The vitamin D is critical. You know, vitamin D is very important for an immune system and our re reproductive system. Cholesterol, gee, the hormones for men or women are cholesterol hormones. And so you have to eat the cholesterol in order to get to the systems where they need to be. Uh, but um, we, we don't, you know, I'm not one to look at every nook and cranny because my theory in all of this is Occam's razor. Occam says, and so does Einstein, the simple answer is the one. Listen, I'm a scientist, I'm a mathematician. I've written and read everything. We make it too complicated even for us physicians to read an article and try to make sense out of it. Uh, data is doo-doo, analysis is paralysis, and lies, damn lies, and statistics. We all know those, those, those sayings. So um, a good quality supplement, male and, and female, that we use the molecular fertility line, uh, and uh, DHEA can be helpful to boost women who have diminished ovarian reserve where your AMH is dropped below one. Uh, but, you know, our basic evaluation, are your tubes open? Do you have sperm? Uh, we look at vitamin Ds. We look at thyroid function. We should probably look more at antithyroid antibodies and T3, T4. I mean, you probably do a lot more of this in your evaluation. Uh, but if you do the diet in a way, again, a lifestyle, we hate the word diet. I mean, the moment you work diet, it's like politics and religion, we run. But your lifestyle is critical to uh, your health and wellness. And when you choose to put the really positive, maybe amazing things in the mind and in the mouth, and you learn how to move the body in a better way, yoga, meditation, prayer, little Tai Chi, um, uh, play with your children, throw the ball. And, you know, we got to get light things to play and interact together is critical. Even in this COVID time, we got to be cognizant and mindful of that. I totally, totally agree. So in your opinion, what, what you've seen in your practice is what we eat, the reason that it, you can either increase or decrease your fertility odds by what you eat. Uh, when when you move more to the, the baby's diet, the carnivore diet, the fatty meat heavy ketivore diet, and you get away from the grains and the sugar, is the reason that that increases your fertility chances, is it because of what you're adding to your diet with the meat and the organs and other things? Or is it what you're subtracting from your diet? Because you can look at this problem either way, right? Or is it the combination of both? Less is always more, as they say. So it's better to remove and then add, but I think it's a combination. If you can add the fat, you're gonna reduce the inflammation. The challenge is that plant oils are phytochemicals that are industrial. And I think you have a really good YouTube show on that one about plant industrial oils. But um, but if you simply eat less frequently, it's the game changer. And if you simply cook the carbs to simplify them. See, I put white sugar cane sugar in my ice cream. I do not use honey. It has too many contaminants of the, of the bees and all the other bugs and bacteria and yeast that grow in them. But white sugar cane sugar is actually the natural sugar that our body can utilize simply. But, you know, you got to reward yourself. We're not here to live in a, uh, in a, in a, uh, a, a way that we're going to uh, treat ourselves in a negative way. We, we, I have cake from time to time. I have some candy from time to time. 
Um, uh, T and I love to go to our local local restaurants. I have my steak and I'll have my ice cream. Uh, and I'll even have from time to time a martini. But let's not be fooled. Alcohol, wine, beer, and spirits are not good for your human body. Uh, so, you know, you got to pick and choose. And ultimately, we want to enjoy life, but we should put ourselves in the temple and less in the amusement park. And so, you know, you're gonna find something that works for you. Uh, we're just here, in, in my opinion, we're really more the same than we are different. Usually our animals, our pets are fed the same thing every day. Variety and spice is deadly. And I'm sure like me, you can't have girlfriends on the side either because right. it's deadly. So when we talk about variety and spice and lots of different things, it's not good. Focus. That's the key. I've had this question from several people, doctor. Uh, do blood types matter when it comes to diet or when it comes to fertility? Well, it is likely true that our blood types matter because your blood type is determined by a phospho, a glyco. A, a, a glycated or glyc glycosylated uh, a protein on the red cell. And so there may be more types of food you eat that have the lectins that are going to bind to those things and cause more damage and disease. Um, and so I'm not an aficionado on which blood type, but my bet is the carnivore blood type is the is a, a plan is for every human animal. Love it. Uh, someone just asked, what about an ovulation? Uh, is this diet going to help a woman who, who has trouble ovulating uh, increase her odds? It, 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 the anovulation, ovarian dysfunction or polycystic ovarian syndrome is a metabolic disorder. You're either eating the plant phytochemical that's interrupting your hypothalamic pituitary ovarian access or the glycation is damaging the molecular structure of the lipoprotein uh, or glycolipoprotein that is necessary as either the key or the lock. So all these things are critical. Uh, and so absolutely everything, including anovulation, even irregular menstruation, heavy bleeding, polyps and fibroids, endo and adeno, <clears throat> They're all related to exactly the same inflammatory process, which unfortunately is a plant-based diet. And believe me, probably going to the market and getting plants or your garden and, and hunting plants is easier than hunting the wildebeest. Uh, so we all like easy. Listen, the most valuable things in life are not easy, they're hard. But are you worth the hard? In my opinion, each and every one of us are the most valuable gods ever created in the universe. When we begin to see ourselves in the mirror as that, rather than I'm too fat, I'm too thin, I'm this or that, we need to change the mind and we will change the body and our lives in all ways. Totally agree. I've had this question a couple of times. You said uh, one meal a day is probably ideal if you're trying to conceive. Now, now our, our uh, patient who's been coming to you is pregnant. She got knocked up. Do you recommend one meal a day as she carries her pregnancy to term? Absolutely. Uh, your baby wants fat. And that's all it wants. And it's going to get it from your fat butt and belly and arms and legs and everything. We are built to get fat, to get pregnant. When we ate the traditional diet we were meant to eat, but we don't. And so once you're pregnant, I see too many, too many women get pregnant. I miscarried. All right. And the miscarriages are happening. And if you read the United States Department of Agriculture's journal on plant toxins that damage the livestock industry, because we put more stock in the livestock than we do in ourselves. And actually, the government sponsors are really being careful of what you feed those animals because plants will cause miscarriages and infertility 
and many other diseases. So absolutely, OMOD, okay, one meal a day at night, one snack at best, but make it a keto fatty baby's plan. But uh, your doctor is going to tell you keto's bad. You better eat for now you're eating for two or three and which then you're going to get diabetes of pregnancy. You're going to get hypertension of pregnancy. You're going to get preeclampsia yep. and you're going to have prematurity and everyone's going to go. We don't know what happened, yep. but there is a disorder that will damage your placenta very, very early. And it's all the same stuff. Yep. I totally agree. I've got it. I've got videos on this channel, uh, several of them on gestational diabetes, one of them on preterm labor. And they're some of my least watched videos. I don't know if it's because I'm a guy and made the video or there's the people just don't believe that diet matters when it comes to those things. Or if, you know, 20 something year old women just don't watch my channel. I don't know why they're but but I, I, I know that it's vital that it, that information be out there. I mean, gestational diabetes is 100% carbohydrate toxicity syndrome. There is no such thing as gestational diabetes. Now there is diabetes in pregnancy if you're a type one and get pregnant. I'm talking about type, basically type two diabetes that de develops in pregnancy. That just doesn't happen if you're eating a low carb diet. It's impossible. It's not physiologically possible to happen, but no one seems to know that or care, and I can't figure that out. Well, it's it, you. You know when you it science is prejudicial. It's all a product of publication and marketing. It has nothing to do with science. Human beings are very prejudicial and judgmental. When we can stand back and be open to everything and anything, and that's what I I began to listen and learn things I didn't believe. The more I listen and learn things I don't believe, the more I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. But I would say that uh, I had a patient today, uh, her RE, uh, when she heard about keto diet, she said, oh, my God, that's deadly. You should never do that. OK. And so because they're ignorant to the understanding of how the human body really functions and why anyone is really infertile or repetitive losses or prematurity uh, go down or sudden infant death. Even SIDS, I bet is all related to the same exact stuff. Yep, 100% agree. Doctor, this has been amazing. Uh, any final thoughts that you would like to wrap this conversation up and put a bow on with, and then tell us where we can find you and tell us about those books again. Well, uh, you're just hitting a home run, Ken, and I've learned so much from you. And just keep on doing what you're doing. And just remind everyone that the access to knowledge is free for everyone. And begin to dig and dive deep into the possibilities. And I do a lot of listening and watching and reading because you're going to build these pearls. But if you read it once and throw it away, you're not getting the very best out of the possibilities. But I would say to know this. We are all the most valuable, expensive, irreplaceable beings of the universe. You today. And we can fix only today for tomorrow. You can never fix yesterday. Spend your time on faith and food and your fitness will follow. But the thing that I practice is your fertility. And whether it's a fertile life or babies, uh, you can find our stuff on Dr. Rob Kilt's uh, MD. Uh, along with uh, our YouTube, our Facebook and Instagram uh, and check out our books on Amazon uh, and tell us your opinions and share the story as you're doing and all of your beautiful, beautiful, amazing uh, 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 patients are doing also. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. I've got links to Dr. Kiltz's stuff. The links will be up here on Facebook and down there on YouTube. And uh, I, I'll put links to the two books on Amazon, Doc. I wasn't aware of those, but I'll get those links put in there in just a few minutes. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure, as always, chatting with you. And uh, I'm going to be keeping an eye on your YouTube channel. This guy obviously has a voice and knows what he's talking about. And he needs to be sharing that brain full of knowledge with the whole world. So we're all going to go and subscribe to your YouTube channel. And we're going to make sure that you're posting at least one, if not two new videos every week so that you can share this amazing amount of knowledge you have with everybody out there who needs it. Thank you so much, doctor. God bless. Thank you so much.
you guys next time.